Welcome to Haxby Shed and part two of repairing and restoring this Elliott 10M Shaper. And this video is mostly about removing this clutch drive pulley and taking the bearings out. And while I think about it, somebody asked me about this front table leg here. Well, basically you just drop it down when you're taking heavy cuts. It only works when the table is set like this. If the table is cranked over, obviously the leg can't touch the resting point below, so the leg doesn't work then. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Well, next day, and I've thought about this overnight, I'm putting quite a bit of work into it and I think we'll make some quite important improvements. So I think it's worth a bit of work to check the bearings on this big pulley here. If I don't do it now, I'm sure in the future I'll listen to it grumbling and just regret that I haven't done them. So we'll get the clutch off. What's that? It's uh, 3 quarter 19 mil releasing this spring here on the clutch. It's a, a tapered cone clutch. I've had this off before. This part anyway. I've got gloves on today to try and keep some of this black grease out of my fingernails. However hard I try, I always seem to have terrible fingernails. Okay, there's a screw to come out of here that retains this. In fact, it's a threaded pin. Oh yeah, that looks a bit grubby in there. Shall I? Shan't I? I think so. It can have the bearings changed for its 60th birthday. So, snap ring. Sorry, this is handheld camera work. Can you see a problem? When I rotate this, the bearing outer turns, obviously, but the bearing inner turns a bit as well. Now there are two bearings, this one and one at the back as well. Now it's going to prove me a liar, isn't it? But it does turn, believe me. <laughs> there it is. I can see it there. Now I can't get this off at the moment. It's kind of stuck on this. I would need a puller about 12 inches across. I haven't got one. What I'm going to do is drill a hole at the back of this plate and then see if I can put something through and knock it from behind. Well, here we go. Same as usual, small job becomes large job. I drilled a hole in the back of this guard, tapped it from behind, no effect. Heated it up to a moderate amount, repeated, no effect. So I'm going to have to make a puller. I've got this plate with lots of screw holes in it and a big hole in the middle. Kind of looks nice, doesn't it? But it's not going to be any use. So I rummaged through all my old car bits and I found this. So this is four inches across, 100 mil near enough. This is the same. So what I think I can do is drill a couple of holes at the extreme edges of this, drill and tap a couple of holes in this, and that could be my puller. That's the plan anyway at the moment. When I think about it, I'm not that happy drilling into that center boss. I've got this all thread, eight millimeter threaded bar, I'm a bit worried it will take too much material away. I'd rather be working further out from the centre. So I've come up with another plan, which is to use this as a spreader bar, but still using this puller. So I've found that if I put that on there, these holes, although they're not quite big enough for this 8mm bar there, line up directly with the holes below. So that's a result, quite by chance. And then using this as a spreader, we can use these outer holes here, I think. These are eight millimeter. And spread the load and then drill that pulley hub a lot further out, which I'm much happier about. All I have to do then is drill it straight, tap it straight, a few little details like that. Right, that's where I've got to. I've got one threaded and one spot drill. I'm getting hungry, I need a break. I'll make a mistake if I keep on working. So I might finish this tomorrow going all right. It's going to work. Well, after a bit of a struggle, finally, I've got 
this puller set up to try and get this off. I prefer not to use this bit if I can. I've put a spacer behind this plate here which pushes on the central boss that this thing spins on. I'm hoping that will be enough to get it off. I've no idea how tight it's going to be. Only if that isn't enough will I start to push as well on this one here because obviously as I push you know it's the action is to pull the pulley off but the same action is trying to push the shaft through and the shaft uh, you know I think could come out the other side where I am apart from a collar that I can see and the collar's only retained by a screw so I don't want to overdo that so that's supplementary if I need it so I'm going to tighten this and this and see what happens well I nip these up <laughs> I can see my spreader plate is slightly bent, but I nipped these up and then I heard a ting and I can see it's just coming now. Yeah, you never hear it creaking as it comes. Well, after quite some time of messing about with different size packing pieces, I finally got to something I think which will get me off the rest of the way. We're about halfway off at the moment. I think I've got about an inch and three quarters of pull available to me. You know, while you watch me uh, do this, I'll just tell you, I've been on the phone this morning to try and get our smart meter changed. So, don't know how it is where you live, but here in the UK, um, we have these things called smart meters. And basically, um, it sends your readings automatically to your energy supplier. And it also holds 24 different tariffs. It can hold a tariff for every half an hour. So you can get onto some smart tariffs. That's the good side of it. Now, originally, the first generation of these meters worked off the mobile phone signal. But the problem with them was, if you move supplier, your meter would possibly go dumb and you'd have to start taking readings again. But now, with the generation two meters, which are smarter, um, in their wisdom, they decided that in the south of the country they would leave the meters on the mobile phone network but in the north of the country they'd have a special network um, which basically operates off the TV masts or masts like TV masts not on the mobile network and they've had delays and problems with it and in our area not too far away we have a radar early warning station and it means that they've had to put the meters on a different band for our area or certainly places which are east of us nearer the coast and originally those meters in that band were just simply not available so that that denied smart meters second generation to us well anyway a few years ago um, I was offered the second generation smart meter and so they came along put it in but I didn't know at the time I needed meters on the other band and so they put this one in and they just handed me the display and said oh there you go mate uh, maybe one day it will work and cleared off and they took out a perfectly working generation one meter so you know I, I don't um, I'm not against the program it's I like the idea of it, but honestly, what a messed up program. <laughs> it has all the signs of a like typical government sponsored program. And all the suppliers in this program were sworn to secrecy because they weren't allowed to say that they were messing it up. <laughs> now then, I think I might run out of pull on this. These threads are getting uh, nearly exhausted on these screws here. Anyway, that's just a smart meter story. And of course we all pay for it. There's a levy on the bills that pays for the smart meter program. Whoa, here we go. We're off. You can see all the various bushes that I used during pulling this pulley off. These bearings, they look like three inches OD and 1.75 ID R and M R and M XLJ 
one dot three quarters, it looks like. I've done a bit of searching online and to buy any sort of quality bearing is going to cost 70 or 80 pounds each. So I'm wondering if I should have started this. Never mind. Um, but the ones that I'm seeing so far, I've looked at two companies, they don't have this shielding on here and these pins, they seem to keep the balls separate as far as I can tell. I don't think they're rollers. So look, I'm going to press these out, clean them up, see what they are. If I've got to swallow, you know, the best part of £200, I suppose I'll do it. I mean, the machine, well, you know, <laughs> what's the machine worth? I guess you just got to do it if you're going to do it. Well, it's confirmed these bearings are well past their working life. They're really quite stiff and grindy. So they'll have to be changed. Now, worked out by measuring this distance and then subtracting the gap inside, it looks like these are 9 16 thick. I think the moral to the story is if you don't want to spend it, don't bother looking at it. I've made a prototype out of wood for a bearing pusher. I'll cut this piece of bar for it. So it just goes in there and it will drop onto that bottom bearing. And then I put something down the centre and it will push that bottom bearing out. You know, I wouldn't endorse these gloves. <laughs> I think my wife got them in the early days of COVID when we all thought we could get infections from, you know, parcels arriving at the door. I remember quarantining parcels. Turned out to be pointless, but we didn't know that at the time. Right. May as well catch it. That's absolutely toast, isn't it? Sorry, folks. Listen to that. That's proper gone. <laughs> and this second one isn't any better. I think I've managed to find some bearings for about £35 a piece. So add 20% for US dollars, add 12% for euros. Now they're going to be unbranded. I asked the guy on the phone, what does, what does that mean? Well, we've never had anybody, anybody send us them back. Okay, well, you know, if they last 25 years, I'll last 25 years. So I'll get those ordered tomorrow because it's Sunday today. So looking at the next uh, concern, we know that the bearing inner was slipping on here, but this edge is really quite tight. I'd like to be able to get this whole pulley back on without taking the shaft out to make a clamp to pull the two together. So I'm going to take this off, put it in the lathe and see if I can machine a fraction off here. When I've done that, I'll get more idea about what's going on with this part of the shaft here, the bearing mount. Just four cap heads holding this on. Then there's a big pin here which locates it. There's a thrust bearing somewhere inside here. I guess it's for the clutch mechanism. Well, this came off after the usual struggles. Had some burrs on these splines, not very much. The thrust bearing looks okay. That's within 0.1 of a millimetre or half a thou. That'll be good enough. Well, that helps a bit. There's still plenty of edge on here for that snap ring to go in. I'm still not sure how I'm going to get this back together. Look, <laughs> come on. A bit more about these. I've ordered the bearings. They should be here in a couple of days. 
I paid about £74 delivered. Um, I've decided that these bearings are really unsuitable for this application because they're not shielded. I mean the brass that you can see there are just pins that keep the balls apart. The ones I'm buying, they're not quite like this anyway, they're more, even more open. Now I asked the people who were supplying them, could I get shielded bearings? Could I get rubber seal bearings? And the answer was no, there was nothing available in this size. Now I could have taken bearings which were thicker like this um, because I could machine part of the shoulder away in the pulley but there just wasn't anything. You know, I mean how far, how much work do they put into it anyway but no they didn't know anything. So I've got to think about how do I protect the ends of the bearings because all sorts of uh, you know dust from the belt uh, dust from the cone clutch, which is just two cast iron cones uh, rubbing together. There's lots of dust around. And that's why I say these bearings are completely unsuitable, in my opinion. Now, <clears throat> that little shoulder there is 1.3 millimetres. So I bought some neoprene, 1.5 mil. I'm going to cut a circle out and put something in here. So, you know, an annular ring of neoprene. That's the idea and then the interference will only be 0.2 of a mil, give or take. Um, and I'm hoping that will keep the dust and rubbish out of the bearing on this end. But then what do you do about the other end? Because the bearing shoulder comes right up to this groove here, the snap ring goes in there. Now potentially I could put a plate on the end here with a hole in, obviously, and make another uh, ring of uh, neoprene, something like that. But anyway, for this end, the brain work, you know, is incomplete yet. But I do want to see how much space I've got here because we've got the pulley on here, we've got the cone clutch here. What's the space available? You know, how much of this space here can I use up with some kind of end cover? So that's what I'm going to measure now. Okay, pulley and clutch cone. So the bearing comes to here and then I've just measured, I've got the end of that um, spigot will come out four millimetres past, so this plus four. If I drop this on here, like that, I can get an idea how much space I've got. Using a piece of wood look there as a space tester, drop that in, move it around, well, that's only uh, 5.7 minus a bit under 4, 1.7. I haven't got much, have I? It's no more really than a sh thin sheet of um, one millimeter thin washer type of amount. So I'm going to have to think about this very carefully.